How do we use the WorkStop Execution Manager REST API? It's a great question. Learn how to make REST calls to WorkStop Execution Manager and run WorkStop certified processes. How do I use the WorkStop Execution Manager REST API? Learn how to use the REST interface for WorkStop Execution Manager so you can run WorkStop certified processes from any location or tool. You can use this to support your continuous testing efforts and DevOps pipelines. The REST calls provide the core actions to start, monitor, and get results from, the, from running. These core endpoints are utilized behind the provided Jenkins plugins and Microsoft ADO pipelines, or Azure DevOps pipelines. So what, are, what REST calls we have? So basically, we have some REST calls that let you like, run a set of certified processes. You can do process um, execute, which you can give it a list of certified processes, you know, and they'll run. You can execute a request, which means if you've got a pre-built request in Execution Manager, it will kick it off. And then you can also use a, um, execute a bookmark. So remember in Management Studio, you can create bookmarks that point to folders or specific processes that you want to run. And uh, the nice thing for that is a lot of people like that use that in their continuous testing efforts where they have a folder in Certify, they drop their processes in, and then they can just run them and they have no um, management of it. They just, if they exist, they run, if they don't, they don't. So once you've run them, um, you sometimes you know what to run. So if you don't know what requests exist, you can use a call to say, give me a list of the requests that are predefined. If you don't know what the bookmarks are, you can make a call to get a list of the bookmarks and their descriptions. Um, you can also have details if you want to find out all the processes that are in the folder or what's defined in the bookmark and things like that. And then the third area is in getting the statuses. So once they're running, um, you want to find out if they've completed or failed or if they're pending running. So we have four getters. One will show you what's pending, what's about to run. Um, request running will show you what's actually running um, across all the agents in your tenancy on EM. Um, if you um, want to know a specific one, you can get the execution status. What we'll see is when you run Say, say run an um, execution manager request, it'll return back an ID, and that can be used in the um, execution status to find out about that very specific one. And then we also have one generic called request completed today. And people put this, say, in their, like, their DevOps um, dashboards. They want to get just a stats on what's run today in execution manager. So to use this, we're going to have to do a, um, some authentication. So the REST calls are secured with the user ID and password and the same way the, um, the user interface is secured. The login um, call presents the user ID and the password, the security token is returned. The token is then provided in the header, kind of very standard. Um, it's set with a 30 minute timeout. So as long as you make a call every 30 minutes, you don't have to um, get a new token. So what that means is say you, you kick off a request, you get the status, and 29 minutes later you ask for the status again, it will reset that timer. Um, we were basically using a OAuth 2 token, um, and that gets that's returned in the body of the um, API token request, and that's then placed in the header itself. So what does the call flow look like? So basically, we're going to use the login to get our token, and we'll put that in the authorization bearer token in the headers. Uh, we'll do like a put request to say execute a, a certified process. It will return the API request ID. Um, that is in you, say, in the get status call. So we'll see this um, several times again. Every time you kick off the running of a process, it returns the ID, and that becomes the input of, say, status calls. And you can see if things are running or if they completed, and then if individual processes are passed or failed. So let's do a demo. So if I look over here, I have the um, execution manager. Um, this is the swagger spec for it, so the API docs index. I'm going to go in and log in. And what this does is it gives me um, my um, token information. And it's going to put that into the header. So first thing I'm going to do is I'll do a get request. So what this does is this lists all the requests available inside of um, execution manager, everything that's predefined. So I can see in this long list, everything that's there. I'll scroll back up. 
Okay, I can see here I have one called ServiceNow. This runs ServiceNow processes and it's got ID 219. So as you can imagine, this type of information is the same thing that's ever in the user interface over here. I can see the list of requests and those type of things that are predefined. So um, that's available within um, the UI. We've given you the flexibility to do it from the API also. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to go run this request. So I'm going to say execute a request um, and when I do try it out, it's going to want the ID. So that ID that I copied out of the file, 219, and I can execute. I can see there's some optional parameters here. These are key value pairs that show up as result attributes for you. Um, so, oops, sorry. If I scroll down, I can see here the response body. I'm going to copy this. So this is the ID of this running request. So this is what got returned. I can see there's an execution status. I'm going to try this out. I'm going to put that ID in here and execute. So what we'll see is this um, ServiceNow process is running on London and it is in the process, the status is running, description is executing. So I actually have different, um, if I have more than one process, they show up as more than one task. Um, and then as they each complete, the statuses will be um, shown if the certified process pass, fails, aborts, and such. Um, then once they've all completed, the status overall will be completed. So if I click Execute, I can see the status hasn't changed. Say I come over here, say to the um, Running Now, I refresh it. I can see Service Now. This process is running, so it says it's passed. Okay, so if we come over, let's click run this again. Yep, it refreshed. So I can see this process, the service now process passed, therefore the um, status is completed, and because there was only one process and it passed, the overall status of this is passed. So this was an example of how to, say, get a request and go execute it, one that's actually been predefined within Execution Manager itself. Now, um, one thing that's very popular is the use of bookmarks. So what bookmarks are, I'll go and execute this, these are defined in Management Studio, and I can um, have lots of these defined, and they can point to, say, a folder, um, or a series of folders, or a series of processes, and um, certify that I want to go run. And I can just refer to them as one thing. Now, um, I can. the nice thing is, if I point to a folder, what that means is, um, as my test um, developers, as they finish their tests and such, all I have to do is drop them into, say, this Jenkins Weekly folder, and whatever's in that folder would get run. So this is very much kind of a DevOps, continuous testing, um, continuous de um, deployment effort. So I've got the name of Jenkins Weekly, and that happens to point to a folder um, in my integration. So I'm, I can see here, I have a bookmark execute. When I try that out, it's gonna take the, um, the bookmark name, um, it, it will take the folder I want the results, so execution manager, and it's still got those optional um, parameters here. I'll execute. So what this does is the same thing. The body will contain the ID, and I can then go look at the status to see if it's running. Execution status. I'll put this new ID in here. Okay, so I can see it's actually running the, this order to cache process on London. Okay, so they, the overall status is running, and that's what goes to completed. And then this execution will have the summary of the pass or fail. So um, the nice thing about this is bookmarks um, are very flexible. You can define them in Management Studio. You can define bookmarks to run, um, point to a certified folder. So any processes in the folder run. We don't do children folders. Um, so it's only them in that, that parent folder. Um, so these are ones like, or your say end-to-end -end tests. You can actually have an explicit list of processes. Um, and you can actually point to your HPALM test sets. Um, so I've got this um, Jenkins Weekly and my functional test project and my certified demo database. And that's what this has started to run. If I click Execute, here I can see it's completed and it failed. So that means this process failed. 
and this um, certify result ID would actually what I can use from an API perspective to get the details on the certify um, what the error message were and such and I'll do a, another YouTube video which shows you how to take these IDs and throw them into um, execution um, use them in the certify results API um, now the last thing I was going to do is show you how to execute um, a, just a list of processes. So if you're say a program guy and you are using say a Groovy script or you know a Ruby script or whatever um, PowerShell and you want to build up your requests dynamically, this is how you do it. Which you'll have to do is you'll have to tell us which certified database it's in, um, the project, and then where you want the results. Give it a name and run. Okay. So kind of the same things you do when you build a request itself. If I execute, same thing will happen. We'll get an ID. And if I come over here and get the, um, the status, I'll enter that ID. And we can see I've got the two different certified processes running. We've got this um, create orders um, fury and this order to cache. And they're now both running. Now. Um, let me show you some of these other APIs for statuses. Um, execution status shows me ones that I specifically picked. If I say request running and I click execute, it'll actually show me what's actually running right now. That order to cache is actually what's running um, within the system itself. So I can find out what's actually running. Um, if they say I've got them pending, which means they're queued up for execution, this call will let me see that. And then you can actually see you know, what's completed today. So if I execute that, all the different things that I've run today, like that ServiceNow request and such, they'll all show up here. And this is one that some people we've found are using kind of their DevOps pipelines um, to figure out what's going on and give them a status or summary for the day. So let's see what's happened here. So we've got, um, these are both running still, and we've got statuses that they're still working away. So as they complete, the tasks of the different certified processes will be marked as complete. And then um, when they both complete, we'll move from overall status of running to completed. So if I sp let's go look over here. So I can see ordered cache is running. I can see, yep, I see the running there. Let's come back here and execute. Okay, I can see, okay, my order to cache failed. So I know that since I have two processes, if one of them fails, um, the overall status of this execution manager request will be marked as failed. So if we give it a couple minutes, um, that Fiori order will complete, and based on its passing and failing is fine, but we know the overall request will end up failing. Okay, it's still running. So just to kind of give a little summary, remember we looked at, um, we can get lists of requests, we get lists of bookmarks, so that kind of tells us what's available to run. We have the execute request, and the execute bookmark, and the execute processes, which are the three ways we can kick them off. And then we can find out specifically about the status of a specific process, what's running, what's pending, what's completed today. So this ID here, remember, is what we get from the um, kicking it off. Let's see, okay, it's it's, oh, it's still running, so we're still executing. So waiting for this to finish up, and then what we'll see is we'll have two different statuses there. Okay. And if you don't believe me, we can come over here, we can fresh it. Yep, this guy is still running. Looks like it's running in New Mexico. We can go spy on that resource. And, oh, I caught it, it's just logging off. Of course, perfect timing. Not much of spying on it. Okay, and that one failed too. So in this case, I sent in two processes, both of them failed. So our status is we've completed the work and the overall status has failed. So hopefully this video helped um, explain how the REST calls work for Execution Manager and how you can use them. Um, look to our Facebook, our LinkedIn, and our Twitter, and our YouTube channel. On YouTube, you'll find this video, and there'll be other videos out there on how to use like the Jenkins plugin, how do we do things like um, use a certified results API. So if we've run these tests, say in continuous testing or from a pipeline, we want to go get details about the failed test steps and those things. Um, it'll be available on other YouTube videos there.